हेलो माय डियर क्यूरियस एंड स्टूडियस स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ सर्जरी माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर महेश चौधरी आई एम वार्म वेलकमिंग यू इन माय सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज दिस सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज कंटेंट्स एंटायर सर्जरी विथ एनेसेशिया विथ रेडियोलॉजी विथ ऑर्थोपेडिक सो स्टेट यून विथ अस लेट स्टार्ट आवर सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज वेलकम डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन माय सर्जरी लेक्चर नंबर सिक्सटी थ्री दैट इज द कंजेनाइटल एनोलिज ऑफ द यूरिथ्रा इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल कवर द कंजेनाइटल यूरिथ्रल स्ट्रिक्चर कंजेनाइटल वॉल्स ऑफ द पोस्टर यूरिथ्रा कंजेनाइटल ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द नेक ऑफ द ब्लैडर दैट इज द मेरियॉन्स डिसीज कॉन्ट्रेक्चर ऑफ द ब्लैडर नेक न्यूप्लाजम्स ऑफ द यूरिथ्रा एंड कार्सिनोमा ऑफ द यूरिथ्रा ऑल दिस पॉइंट्स इज कवर इन दिस लेक्चर नाउ स्टार्ट विथ द कंजेंटल एनोमोलिज ऑफ द यूरिथ्रा देर आर अ फ्यू एनोमोलिज ऑफ द यूरिथ्रा विच आर टू रेयर टू रिक्वायर एनी मेन्शन दैट इज द डुप्लीकेशन ऑफ द यूरिथ्रा कंजेनाइटल एबसेंस ऑफ द पेनिस दैट इज द अपेनिया मेगालोपेनिस और माइक्रोपेनिस अ फ्यू कंजेनाइटल एनोमोलिज through do rare sometimes it, it is seen in surgical practice among of that one is the congenital urethral stricture the two common sites are the membranous urethra and in the region of the corona the effect of such urethral strictures are mainly obstruction to the flow of urine and back pressure from obstruction leading to the hypertrophy of detrusor muscle ureteral vesical reflux hydronephrosis and hydroid ureter secondary infection is also common and the management of this condition that is the congenital urethral stricture when a baby presents with the symptoms mentioned above excretory urogram should be performed along with the posterior hoiding film urethrogram may be necessary to delineate the site degree and the length of the stricture urethral dilatation which sounds or filiform bugies with follows are main treatment such strictures do respond well to dilatation but it fails internal urethrotomy or surgical repair of the stricture that is the urethroplasty is performed dear students here is the image on your screen that is the congenital urethral stricture clearly seen by the cystogram this is the another image of the congenital urethral stricture by the cystoscope pediatric cystoscope you can the next anomaly of the urethra is the congenital walls of the posterior urethra congenital posterior urethral wall are usually seen on the floor of the prostatic urethra just below the verum montanum occasionally one may see these walls above the verum montanum the peculiarity of these walls is that these allow the catheter to be passed easily but after the outflow of the urine these types of the clinical presentation are seen when the walls are incomplete the patient may reach adolescence or adult life without symptoms but hypertrophy of the detrusor muscles vesical diverticula dilatation of the prostatic urethra and the hypertrophy of the trigonal muscles are often noticed patient with moderate obstruction and abnormal urogram usually present earlier and severe obstruction with uremia and the next is the most reliable method to confirm the diagnosis is hoiding cystourethrography is to be done cystourethroscopy fails to identify the walls as the irrigating fluid flows into the bladder with fully opening of the walls that's why it is not detectable on the cystourethrography so the on the cystourethroscopy that's why the cystourethrography should be performed dear students here is a clear picture the congenital walls of the posterior urethra how it affects the bladder thickening of the bladder wall the mega ureter ureter nephrosis hydronephrosis is there this is another picture type 1 it is the frequent uh, congenital walls of the urethra there is the type second very infrequent and third is the infrequent wall of the urethra is clearly seen this is the another animated picture showing the type 1 2 3 congenital wall of the posterior urethra now the posterior urethral wall obstructive nephropathy can be determined by this picture the bladder is full the pressure back pressure on the ureter and then kidney the kidney parenchyma is becomes thin and its goes pressure to the glomerulus and indirectly by on the heart now the treatment suprapubic cystostomy is performed as an emergency life saving procedure when the urea and npm levels in the blood have come down to the normal level transurethral resections of the wall should be performed now the next entity next congenital abnormality of the urethral urethra is the anterior urethral wall in a few rare instances inferior urethral wall have been reported a hoiding cysto urethrogram is again the best indication for diagnosis the walls are destroyed by transurethral root of the fulcration through the penendoscopy or by the fragmentation by the passage of sounds now the next congenital anomaly of the uh, urethra is the congenital obstruction of the neck 
of the bladder that is the Marion's disease the symptoms are almost identical with those of the congenital walls of the posterior urethra diagnosis can be made by the cystoscopy through which hypertrophied intraureteric ridge can be seen widening cystourethrography will show non filling of the posterior urethra treatment is yv plasty cut in y and suture in the v shape now the next point of this lecture is the contracture of the bladder neck first etiology it is usually due to the congenital muscular hypertrophy at the neck of the bladder or fibrosis at the same place as a sequelae to the chronic prostatitis in the main and urethrotrigonitis in females clinical features patient may present at any age starting from the young children to above the 50 years when the etiology is congenital muscular hypertrophy patients are usually young children dysuria is the main symptoms with ultimate development of the hydroureter and the hydro nephrosis recurrent urinary infections are also common presentation for this condition now the treatment medical treatment alpha blocking agents that is the pheno phenylpenzaimine have been used to relax the bladder neck there is an important side effect of this drug that is the postural hypertension now the surgical treatment of the contracture of the bladder neck is this is the often required as the medical treatment is mostly failure transurethral resection of the bladder neck has been performed with some success this condition may recur in a few cases due to inadequate division of the fibers of the bladder neck dear students here is a good picture of, of the cystourogram there is a evidence of the bladder neck contracture is clearly seen this is the cystoscopic picture of the bladder neck contracture this is the picture showing in the cystoscopy there is a very small opening of the urethra is clearly seen in the first picture and in the second picture by the urethrotome it is widened and cut by the electrocautery and make widen the urethral openings now the bony is operation though transurethral resection is gaining popularity yet this open operation is suitable for failure cases and y shape incision is made on the anterior wall of the bladder near its neck the apex between the two limbs or the y shape incision is made on the anterior wall of the bladder near its neck the apex between two limbs or the y is brought down to the end of the vertical limb of the y to make the incision a v shaped one this will increase the circumference of the neck of the bladder and v shaped incision is now suture now the next point of this lecture is the neoplasms of the urethra these are the extremely uncommon the varieties of the neoplasms which can be seen in the urethra are polyp papilloma angioma and carcinoma polyp first is the polyp these are usually seen around the verum montanum a few cases of the congenital urethral polyp have been noticed otherwise these are usually associated with chronic urethritis second is the papilloma these are usually seen in the fossa navicularis just inside the external urinary meatus occasionally multiple papillomas of the posterior urethra have been detected which are usually associated with papilloma of the bladder third entity is the angioma hematuria is the main complaint which is often profuse and may occur independent of the micturition treatment of the all benign neoplasm is diathermy coagulation through a urethroscope and the next point is the carcinoma of the urethra this is the extremely rare profuse urethral discharge is the main symptom it is often associated with it is often associated with the cause of the urethritis later on the discharge becomes blood stained a tendency to bleed easily during instrumentation is very much suspicious biopsy establishes the diagnosis now the treatment when the carcinoma is in the anterior anterior urethra either partial or total amputation of the penis is required according to the site of the carcinoma when carcinoma is situated in the posterior urethra more extensive see operation is in the form of the radical prostatectomy should be considered dear students here is a image of the carcinoma of the urethra is clearly seen there is a polyp type here is a papilloma is seen in the urethra the carcinoma of the urethra this is the another images carcinoma of the urethra another picture is the ct pictures is there and these images showing clearly the picture of carcinoma dear students here i try to cover all the points in this lecture regarding the congenital anomalies of the urethra you can refer a good videos on youtube regarding these points here is the end of our series lecture number 63 that is the congenital anomalies of the urethra thank you